from the Philippines. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. Yay! <laughs> no, not passless, you won't. <laughs> Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up, the most epic climb in the world, maybe. Plus, we've got cycling shorts, a roundup of cyclocross, a Dan Craven update. Mm, that was grotty. Plus, more of your best hacks and bodges. And all of our usual tech, Dom's tweet, comment, and caption of the week. Oh, and don't forget, we also think we found the Tommy Vockler of cyclocross. <laughs> We had to hold on to the motorbike to catch up. Fingers on buzzers. Let's get quizzical. Three, two, one. Many of you will have seen that last week we put out our very first GCN cycling quiz. The question is, who are they? Now we've had loads of entries for the competition already, but if you haven't done so yet, make sure you go and check it out and submit your entry sooner rather than later. Yeah, we've got some top swag on offer. A t-shirt, a mug, a bottle. Closes on the 23rd of November, so still a couple of weeks to go, week and a half, but you could win this jersey. It's signed by Joachim Rodriguez. Joachim. It's signed by Ma Marcel Kittel. It's signed by Peter Sagan. And if we get more than 10,000 entries, I'm going to sign it. Oh, Dan's going to sign it. Simon's going to sign it. Lasty's going to sign it. It's the, it's the best quiz of all time. <laughs> not sure if that's really easy or not. Whoa! Whoa! Never going to get more than 10,000 entries now. Are we? About 10 days ago, the Taiwan KOM Challenge took place up the Huan Climb, and it got us wondering, is that the most epic climb in the world? It's basically a mass participation, mass start event, which for the first 18 k's out of 110 is neutralised, and after that, over the following 90 k's or so, they go from sea level all the way up to 3,275 metres above sea level, which is pretty epic. That's also pretty high. Mm. But admittedly, the gradient isn't too steep for the most part. That is until the final 10 kilometers when it does rear its head just a little bit. But without a doubt, that's uh, when I've never ridden anything near no. that sort of height in, on one particular climb in one day. In fact, the longest climb I've ever gone up. Matt Stevens, heart of gold, hair of someone else. Was in 2000 in the Tornankawi up to a tea plantation. And the worst thing was I didn't even get a cup of tea at the end of it. No cup of tea? No. Well, do you want to know what the winner of this event got on the day? More than a cup of tea. Tell me. Damien Monnier, a stage winner at the Giro d'Italia a few years ago, he picked up a pretty cool $31,000 for being Whoa. first across the line. Took him just over three and a half hours, whilst the best lady was Eri Yonami, and she did it in just over four hours. Very respectable indeed. That is epic, isn't it? Well, we want to know what your thoughts are on this. Is that the most epic climb in the world, or have you got one that's even more epic? Is it steeper? Is it longer? Is it gnarlier? Or harder. Yeah, or, or harder, yeah, thanks for that, Dan. But uh, as ever, leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Time now for Caption of the Week. Now last week we had this rather cracking pitch of Tim Merlier taking a little bit of a tumble, to say the very least, in some sand. And the winner is this, from John McAllister. John says, he was the last man sanding. I see what you did there, John. Mm. Very, very good Play indeed. Words. Get in touch with us on Facebook or on a message on YouTube and with your address, we shall send out some GCN swag. Now, for those of you wanting to get your teeth stuck into this week's photo, here it is. It's from the start of 2015 and it's Tim Dewala and Philippe Gilbert swapping roles, Gilbert taking the photos. Now, you've been doing really well in the comments and captions recently, so we thought that we wouldn't give you our captions to start with. No. Because that's... it was terrible. So good luck, leave them in the comments section down below. Hmm, it's toughy. Tech news now. Do we have to do this? Yep. Now this is something that our very own son Rich and is gonna be very pleased about because Ben Father of Argonaut Cycles has teamed up with Chris King to make a new version of the PF30 
Got some bracket. Mm, he has indeed. Now, before you all start <gasps> groaning, the reason that Sai is going to be so happy about this is that this new design is threaded. Now, it's no secret that consumers and manufacturers alike have been incredibly frustrated with some of the modern press fit bottom brackets, such as the PF30 and also the BB30. And this has been designed to solve those problems. Yeah, three versions, I just did two, but three versions of the bottom bracket are going to be rolled out and they should iron out the problems that Dan has already alluded to. Now, whether it will become an industry standard still remains to be seen, but one thing is for certain, consumers and manufacturers alike do need some sort of industry standard in the very near future. Yeah, a bit of bad news though is that the design will not be backwards compatible. So if you want one, not only will you have to shell out See what I did there for a new good. bottom bracket, but also a new frame as well. And likewise, manufacturers are going to have to add an, add, add, an, add a whole new, I can't do it with these glasses on, going to have to add a new model into their range to accommodate it. Now, although me and Dan could quite happily wax lyrical about bottom brackets all day long, well, there's a man who does that for a living, really. Check out this tweet from Katie Fretz for more info on bottom brackets. <laughs> his face. Time for comment of the week. First up we have quite a funny one here from Mr Lewis Weekly underneath the how to pack your pockets for a sportif. Now Lewis Weekly said 2010 called they want their Daniel Lloyd back. Mm. Well, they're not having me. That's pretty good that is. Right, now one that we mentioned briefly at the very start of the show, you're probably wondering what we were talking about, but it came underneath Tim Muirson's How to Ride in Sand video, and it came from Cody Brown, who said, one minute, 12 seconds in, Lasty is the Tommy V of cyclocross. I, I tend to agree. It's, yeah, it's me too. astonishing um, facial expression yeah. there from, uh, from Lasty. <laughs> Kevin Powers won round three of the Super Prestige series at the weekend in Rudford, beating a rather frustrated Wout van Aert, who narrowly missed out on a European medal the day before in a race that was actually won by Lars van der Haar. And meanwhile, he did get a medal, but he was, he was frustrated. Yeah. But a resurgent, Sven Nies was third. Mm. Now, both Nice and Van Aert were very quick to praise Powers, who they said was absolutely flying on the day. Meanwhile, in the women's race, Sanna Kant took the victory ahead of Van Loy and Buskuren. And you might also have noticed that in the men's race, Bart Wellens was there. Now, he retired at the end of last year, but officially bid farewell to the sport by doing a lap of honour. It was certainly well received, but sticking on the theme of cyclocross, to a degree, or well, it's like a road cyclocross amalgam, we asked you to vote last week by the medium of Twitter poll for who was going to be the king of the Koppenberg. Mm. And the votes are in. 67% of you said Tom Bonin, 33 Wout van Aert. Wow. Well, I guess there's only one way to settle it now. Time for you two to get up the Koppenberg and have a race. I'm sure they'll do it for us. Game on. Time now for our hack forward slash bodge of the week. Plenty more have been sent in, so we've picked out our favourites, the first of which comes in from Eric Hendrickson. Now he was obviously in need of a cone spanner, didn't have one, so he ground down an adjustable spanner or wrench, so it ended up looking like this, and apparently it worked pretty well. Some top lathe skills there, but how about this absolute perler from Frank Whittle. He needed another spacer on his handlebar stem, ran out or didn't have any, so used a cog. I must admit it does look quite hip and cool and trendy, but... Although potentially quite dangerous for the knees, looking yeah, at that. I yeah. don't know if I'd recommend that to It anyone. does look quite stylish, then, must admit. Likewise, something else I wouldn't recommend, but still my favourite bodge of the week. It was sent in to us by John Carroll, who spotted it at a triathlon this year in Ireland. And it's a set of tri-bar extensions that have been bodged together using a broom handle and two dish scrubbers. <laughs> it's incredible, look at it. It is an app. I think that's my favourite of the year so far, that <laughs> yeah. bodge. But he could, I suppose he could clean his bike afterwards, couldn't he? Mm. Don't try it at home, kids. Or, no. or even adults. No. Cycling shorts now, and we shall begin with this. So in January, Kaisa Thailand will begin her attempt at breaking the record for the farthest distance ridden by a female in one year. And it's a really old record, even older than the men's equivalent. Set all the way back in 1938, it stands at 29,603 miles, Whoa. or 47,641 kilometers. And that was set by Billy Fleming, who unfortunately passed away just last year. Yeah, Thailand is gonna to attempt to ride further than 36,000 miles over 
the 365 days that compromise one year. And that means she's gonna to have to ride around 100 miles every single day. So we here at GC are gonna watch your progress, Tyler, with interest. And it's certainly something I wouldn't want to attempt, mm. so very best of luck with that. Yes, indeed. Now, another interesting story which caught our eye last week was on Vela News, and it came from the Ruta de la Conquistadores in Costa Rica, which is a savage three-day mountain bike stage race, and one man had a very lucky escape. He certainly did. Mark Lyons of Colorado was found wandering around in the jungle after being washed away after crossing a river. He lost his bike and his shoes in the process. Ooh. Ooh. The Rulé Classic exhibition will take place between the 19th and the 21st of November, and it looks like it's going to be a real feast for cycling fans. Luminaries such as Eddie Merckx, Alberto Contador, Lizzie Armitstead, and Fabian Cancellara are all going to be present. Mario Cipollini is going to make an appearance mm. as well, as well as 30 of the world's best cycling brands. Also, a World Tour bike collection, a vintage jersey collection, and much, much more. Certainly something for everybody. We mm. reckon. That sounds pretty cool. Anyway, did you hear this news from the Sea Otter Classic, the no. biggest bike festival over in the US? They've announced that next year they're going to run an e-bike race. And I've got absolutely no idea how that's going to work. Well, I would imagine it will be bikes assisted with electric power and the first across the line is declared the winner. Yeah, fair enough. Chris Froome has announced on Twitter he'll be releasing his physiological data on December the 3rd, but via men's magazine, Esquire. Ah, oh, okay. Now the performance data will be from 2007 and also from August where he performed tests at the GSK Human Performance Lab. Hmm. Biggest non-story of the week, though, has to be the headline seen on a number of cycling websites. Clothing brand parts ways with high-profile World Tour T. This being the story that Rafa will not be renewing their contract to provide Team Sky with clothing beyond 2016. I've heard it's because uh, the riders just look like they're enjoying riding their bikes too much. Tom Bonin fans, and that does include us. We'll be pleased to hear that Tom is back on his bike. Remember, he sustained a fractured skull, a nasty crash at the Tour of Abu Dhabi. Now, likewise, Teo Boss, he's back on his bike too. He was involved in the same crash as our Tom. Mm, good to hear. Well, we'll finish Cycling Shorts this week with news about Dan Craven, who Ooh. I think I'm right in saying, Matt, is undoubtedly our favorite Namibian cyclist who has a beard. Yeah, undisputed. Uh, whatever's in the bus, really. <laughs> Well, he has announced that next year he will be parting ways with Europe Car. So from January, he's actually going to be riding for the Israeli Cycling Academy team. He's going to be joined by Nicky Sorensen, who moves across from Tinkoff Saxo as well. Is he? Wow, we've got some big names. Yeah, that was grotty. Hmm. Hmm. Dom, again, has chosen a couple of perlers, but this one really does take <laughs> the cake. Our friend and yours, Carlton Kirby, in this, well, quite remarkable piece of attire, forward slash t-shirt. The tweet reads, I blame at Daniel Lloyd one for all styling issues. And if you didn't know, that's a picture of Gianni Savio, the famous Italian director sportif of Androni Giacotone. And the reason he's blaming me is because I know he's a big fan of Gianni Savio and I saw this t-shirt and I suggested he got it. Not thinking he actually would and then wear it and then share it publicly. Anyway, Dom's other tweet came from Zdenik Stiba who posted this picture from a few years ago and said, wow, even at Sven Nice, or Nice, Looks young in this photo. He must, does. Must have been taken a while ago, then, mustn't it? On the channel this week, on Wednesday, it's winter riding mistakes. Given the generally higher risk of mechanicals and punctures during the winter months, it's vital that you have enough with you to cover most eventualities. So, as well as the usual Allen key set and tyre levers, ensure you have a chain link remover and more than just one solitary inner tube. Guys, do you just want to just want to use mine. Thursday, it's the top five weirdest helmets. On Friday, it's a cracker. Mario Cipollini v Mark Cavendish. Whoa, that's going to be a close he's one. He's going to come out on top. Saturday's pro bike is Sven Nace's Trek Boon. You cannot miss this one. Even if it was covered in Belgian mud, you'd still be able to see it. What's really interesting about the Boon frame is that, like the Damane, it shares this, which is an ISO speed decoupler. Sunday is off the back. And on Monday, I show you how to use quick releases. I've got a few tips in there for you as well. Now with the front one, I tend to angle the lever so it's facing towards the back of the bike, either directly back or upwards at 45 degrees. And this is for the simple reason that if you have it facing forwards, 
there is the very small potential that it can get snagged on some undergrowth if you're riding in such an area and potentially come open. And then on Tuesday it is background to this, the GCN show. And don't forget, you can introduce the show. by using the hashtag on social media, Welcome GCN, Twitter, Instagram, or even a Facebook message, and you can be on a GCN. We have had some crackers, yeah. so keep them coming. Please keep them coming. That's a little bit desperate. Is it? Just, Just keep, keep them coming. coming. Are you ready? It's extreme corner time. Now, many of you of a certain age, myself and Matt included, will Indeed. remember this legendary film, BMX Bandits, which cracker, starred a very young Nicole Kidman. Well, a couple of very modern pros have decided to pay tribute to said movie, and they have come up with this. BMX boys have a lot of fun. Dylan Tailwick from 360 is in the sun. Right, well, I'm almost certain that you would like to go to another video very quickly indeed. So just up there, you can go That's directly right. to the first ever GCN cycling quiz, which we talked about earlier. Yeah, and picking up from our epic climbs feature at the top of the show, if you want to see some more epic climbs, head down here for our epic climb playlist. It is epic. Yeah, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. What you've got to do is click on this window, which is around Matt and myself. Or click on our bang. I've clicked on the bang before. I don't know what you mean. 